everyone, this is Tamara from ShelfAddiction.com, and welcome to episode 55. Joining me is Coastal Magic Convention featured author A.E. Via, also known as Adrian Via. She's one of the talented authors that will be in attendance at CMC this upcoming February in Daytona Beach, Florida. A.E. Via is the author of over 12 MM gay contemporary romance titles, including today's featured title, The Secrets in My Scowl, that was released this past October. Be sure to check out Adrian's books and find her all over social media. Her links can be found below in the show notes. If you'd like to comment on today's episode, please do so below or tweet at me on Twitter at Shelf Addiction. If you want more featured author interviews, give this episode a like so that I know that you want to hear from more authors. Hi, Adrian. Good evening. How are you this uh, lovely day? Good evening. I'm good, Tamara. How are you? I'm great. Um, I'm so glad you were able to talk with me today. And we have got some fun stuff we're going to cover today. Are you excited for our topic? I am very excited. This is going to be good. This is one of my favorite topics. Awesome. So you guys, we are here this evening talking about um, MM romance, which is male, male, gay romance. If you guys don't know, I'm new to this genre. And I know some of you in the audience are and some of you are not. So you're going to come along with me on my exploration of MM romance. (laughs) And Adrian is going to help me out with that. (laughs) Okay. Happy to. Yes. Okay. So, you know, before we jump into that, I know that you writers read as much as us readers do. So if you're reading anything right now, would you care sharing um, what's on your nightstand? Okay. Well, yeah, I do read a lot. I always like to say I am a reader, um, actually, before I am a writer. Um, So I do have to get my fair share of reading reading in. Right now, I'm really on a huge Jerry Cole kick right now. Um, His first time uh, romance series has lots of them. Um, so I'm really on on that kick right now. I'm actually reading his newest one, which is Catch Me, which is a football uh, first time gay mm-hmm. uh, story. Really mm-hmm. enjoying that. I enjoy all of his work. Mm-hmm. Uh, I recently read I try to read at least a book a week. Sometimes it's hard when I'm writing, um, but I really need to get that that um, that in me if I want to you know, have some happiness in my life. So I do have to still keep my reading up. I'm reading, I read Torch recently, um, Jocelyn Drake. That was okay. a huge one. Uh, that series is all alpha male, um, uh, action, crime, suspense, um, huge series. It's the, um, the unbreakable, unbreakable bond series. And then of course I'm going right into Amy Nicole, uh, she has a Dying to be Loved book that uh, just released. So I, I keep the, this something back to back. My TBR is full all the time. <laughs> and I just binge read, especially in between books. I will binge read as much as I can. So that's on my on my TBR for right now. Yes, you are a true reader. I can tell because we all binge <laughs> read and we all have a mile long TBR list. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> awesome. What books or authors would you say have influenced your writing style? From the beginning, I would start with what got me hooked on it would be Elin Harris, who um, is deceased now, but was, is a African-American uh, MM author. And um, I started with um, one of his first and... I just got hooked from there. And that was 11 years ago. Oh, Uh, I know (laughs) Elin Harris, actually. I met him at a signing. I read his series. And that was the first and last that I read of that genre. But I really enjoyed it. Basil was a crazy guy. I'm like, oh, I love it. He got me started on it. and, And I have been hooked ever since. I have not went back. I haven't read anything else, um, MF at all since I started, um, reading his books. And then um, I discovered Goodreads. Mm -hmm. I just discovered this whole world of of MM authors. And I um, started with G.A. Hauser, I would say, is the one who I really got hooked on next. And she just really opened my eyes that women, you know, write this genre too. That was huge to me. I did not know that. I I was automatically came in thinking that it was going to be all uh, men writers. Right. And I was hugely mistaken, obviously. Um, And so I started with her, which is my number one recommendation to um, 
anyone who's considering wanting to start uh, MM, um, her first uh, first books in her Heroes series are, I think, some of the biggest uh, that will definitely hook you. And uh, I always recommend um, In and Out is always my first recommendation is The Firefighters. Mm-hmm. Um, love story. And if that doesn't hook you, I don't, I don't know what will. <laughs> <laughs> but G.A. Howser was my next. And I just read her whole catalog, which is huge, but surprisingly didn't take me long. So what kind of, um, so we know you had, you know, some influence when you started reading, you know, MM romance books, but what made you kind of want to take the plunge and say, Hey, I can write this. I like writing this. That kind of, I said, I was reading a good, just reading solid MM for a good, you know, seven, eight years. And my husband actually is the one who said, you know, you could probably write your own story. You keep your head in a book at all times. Like you can probably just write your own story. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, it was just kind of like a hmm, like an epiphany, you know, kind of thing. Like, wow, maybe I can. And I think literally the next week, I sat down with my laptop and and started writing Blue Moon. And uh, it just it just came to me. It was kind of all the things that I felt like I would like to read yep. in a story that I hadn't been getting collectively. That's why Blue Moon's kind of all over the place. There's a whole lot going on in there, but I just put in everything I just love in MM and that's that's how Blue Moon came. Awesome. So how many books published are you in now? Well, this is book 13. Wow. <laughs> Impressive. So. You're also writing as like- much as you're reading. <laughs> Yeah, I was looking around like maybe I should count, but I, I believe um, book releasing coming up in December for Christmas Eve is book 13. Awesome. Okay, so what's the name of the title coming this year? You know, at the end uh, of the year. Well, I released Secrets in My Scowl um, just a few weeks ago at the end of October. Mm-hmm. And what I'm just finished up now that is releasing Christmas Eve is the next installment in the Nothing Special series, which is my biggest series I do believe Uh, not number wise but just as far as fan base and readership nothing special is the biggest I'm finally putting out the next nothing special book okay very cool so let's go on with your recommendations what's your next recommendation for um, a novice MM reader okay so I tried to give readers a little a broad spectrum Uh, there's a lot of sub genres you know in there I write primarily uh, mostly alpha males, um, but there's a lot of subgenres. Mine's all mostly contemporary, all contemporary. But uh, I also have paranormal, mm-hmm. and I love writing. I mean, love reading paranormal. And I recommended Andrea Large, um, her Tameness of the Wolf books, which she has four currently. Um, and I have not heard of her continuing with that series anymore. But it's um, marine werewolves so of course i'm always on the alpha kick but marine werewolves um and the way she tells this story i just feel like is is such a break from the normal mm paranormal uh shifter series it's it's very different i mean these characters kind of mimic um uh roles that were very prominent you know um uh legendary roles and the way she portrays these werewolves, they're, they're not just, you know, meet a mate and then, you know, they're in love and just a completely different story, a military story. Okay. And so I recommend that for paranormal, huge, huge love. I fangirl all over her when I, when I see her. <laughs> okay. I'm going to add that to and my I'm sorry, TBR. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, you know, I said Andrea Large. I'm sorry. I'm reading down my list. It's Kendall McKenna. I was like, why am I saying Andrea? That's Kendall McKenna who writes the Tameness of the Wolf books. Okay, Kendall McKenna. I'll be adding that to my TBR because you probably don't know this, but my listeners, you guys know I love paranormal, urban fantasy. I love yeah. it all. So I'm about that life. So I'll definitely be adding that one as well. <laughs> you will not be sorry. I promise you. Okay. And what's the next one on your list? The next one um, is the War Trilogy. This is Andrea Andrea Large. She writes the War Trilogies. It's okay. kind of a, a Wounded Warriors uh, story to me. It Even saying that makes it sound like it's a sad story, but it's really a happily ever after. It's about 
uh, two Marines, uh, you know, that find each other. Uh, they both experience some horrible tragedies uh, in Afghanistan and they come back to the States and they're coping with uh, life, coping with loss and they find each other. It's a gay for you story, which I, I love that subgenre too. Um, okay. So, this one- is my little green that's showing. So what does, um, your, you know, or blue, whatever <laughs> that color is for people that don't know anything. So <laughs> what, what is gay for you? Gay for you is the MCs or one of the MCs, whichever was straight. Oh, okay. Uh, all their life or has always, uh, identified as straight. Mm-hmm. Um, and then meet someone who stirs these feelings and emotions and meets a man that stirs these feelings and emotions in them. And they, you know, give in to them. Give in okay. To, got it. Yes. Just gave, gave for them. So, okay. um, and this, this Marine, he was, uh, he was married and lost his wife in Afghanistan and his friend is there, you know, to help pick up the pieces and they form this bond yeah. And the emotions fly. That's an amazing story. That's a, um, I believe she has three books in that series. So I'm not a huge serial reader. Mm-hmm. I don't mind, you know, four or five books is good. Six, but I'm not really going into the, you know, I don't really recommend, you know, 20 plus books for you. <laughs> you have yeah, that's to, a lot. You know, it's a long <laughs> way. To, it's a long way to go back. So yeah. I, I, I do like to recommend books that are, that are kind of, you know, you can get, you know, nice and caught up. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's see. How many was that? Was that four suggestions already or just two? I heard you mentioned that a few is, earlier on. So GA is my, is my first. And mm-hmm. then I did the paranormal there. Uh, with Kendall McKenna and then the war trilogy. So that's three. Okay. And I have two more. Yep. On this. Well, well, I'm really going by authors. So authors that will hopefully you can get you definitely hooked on MM. Okay. What's your fourth one? Fourth one is, um, this is if you love the superstardom uh, lifestyle. So my next one is Ann Lister's The Rock Gods. You Ooh, okay. may have heard of her. Because she's she's a really huge author, and the Rock Gods is is about rock stars who in in their lives and living in the spotlight, um, and being an all um, all gay band living in that spotlight, trying to have relationships, and the public, you know, dealing with that, dealing with the media, and 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 still the stigmas of of being gay and in that lifestyle and. Mm-hmm. Uh, she has a, a huge series of that has seven books, but all great. I've read them all, all, Fabulous. all great. And she segues right into uh, protecting the rock gods. So she has a bodyguard series uh, <laughs> of protected the, the rock stars too. So she, she's amazing. And what comes out of her mind just amazes me. And um, so I, I enjoy that. And, and last but not least, one, yeah. uh, Last but definitely not least, and this didn't go in any you know real type of order. Yeah, uh, is Kendall Alexander. I've heard but that name before somehow. They, is she very popular as well? I believe it. Okay, both of them. There's two of them, um, and yes, hugely popular uh, ladies, very talented ladies. And I think still my all time favorite is uh, Texas Prize. If you like cowboys, <laughs> <laughs> depends on my mood. Um, <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so I had I had to put that in there. So mm-hmm. Texas Pride is still one of my it's in my top five favorite MM books, which I've read. I'm in the thousands. So I was in the, in the thousands of read uh, MM books and Texas Pride is in my top five. So mm-hmm. were these listed um, in particular order, like one through five or were these just your top five period? Or do you have like of these five, oh, if yeah. you had to say start here? Where would you say? I'll say top five, period. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, they were not in any order. Mm-hmm. Let's say I would say if you want to want a contemporary read to start with MM, I would say start with G.A. Hauser's In and Out. That's hot love. It's not too much. You know, sometimes, you know, this genre can be so much. I mean, these aren't. Uh, erotic writers where there's not a ton of plot. It's morely focused on the, on the sex in the book. These aren't just erotic writers. These are strong plot, strong character background, 
uh, everything that you that you want in a full length novel. And so that's why I recommend that one. Well, you know what? I like that all of your recommendations, they were all well rounded. So they pretty much touched every subgenre or a lot of them that people enjoy in MF, you know, romances. Uh-huh. So like paranormal and contemporary and, you know, military feel, you know, you had a lot of variety. So that's really cool. So there's something for everyone. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so let's talk a little bit about The Secrets in My Scowl, since that was the most recent release. And yes. I actually started reading this a couple days ago. And I uh-huh. got the preview for Kendall. <laughs> And I was like, wow, this is really good. I got to find out what's going to happen next. So, <laughs> Thank you. That's that's great. That is awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. I was looking on um, Goodreads and it looks like everyone is really loving this book. Your ratings are amazing for this um, title. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. This is it's it's been a while since I wrote this type of love story. I'm usually like I said a lot of action, a lot of you know suspense and gunfire and all these types of things. So this is really just a straight contemporary wooing the guy uh, type read. So I'm, I'm glad it's going over well because I haven't wrote a book like that in quite some time. Yeah, I mean, um, I guess uh, Jacob was having a hard time of things at the the onset of this book. So. Um... Let's he goes about, through, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh my goodness, man. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, our two leading guys in this book. Um, I haven't gotten to the part where he meets Wild yet because that wasn't included in the free preview. <laughs> but let's talk a little okay. bit about them. Are they both alphas or okay. I don't know? Yes. Yeah, they they are both. I'm not going to say alpha, but manly, manly men, very, very manly men. Um, Jacob, he is, um, he is ex-military. So I would say he is my more alpha, uh, character. And yeah, he's just had a rough go at life. Uh, everything that he has tried and attempted as far as, you know, love or relationship has, has backfired on him, has shot him down. Uh, So he's a very jilted, very, you know, pessimistic guy. Mm -hmm. And um, and he meets Wild. Wild is a is a wedding planner. But again, did not make him a, um, you know, stereotypical uh, wedding planner. He's very manly. He's. You know, he's stylish and, and things like that, but he's he's not a. Uh, an infinite character mm-hmm. at all mm-hmm. and um so when they meet there's like like i said in, in this in the blur there's a lot of uh sparks flying i mean their occupations are, are such a uh so different that they can't help but but bump heads in the very beginning so a divorce lawyer at a wedding planner is a very unlikely match Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I like to, I wanted to choose characters. Like what's, I really thought of like, what's the most opposite characters that I could possibly think of. Mm-hmm. Cause I wanted there to be that, that spark and that in, a, in the very beginning. So it's that, um, I can't stand you, but dang, okay, let's, <laughs> let's see what's going on here. Because I mean, <laughs> I see that a lot in romance where like, you know, the characters really hate each other in the beginning, but then something happens. And then the next thing, you know, <laughs> You know, it's on and popping, and they just are all right. with each other. So, <laughs> yeah, I'll call it kind of a enemies to lovers story. Yeah. So I wouldn't really say they were enemies. Jacob was just so so closed off and and not open to any type of friendship or any type of uh of you know welcoming or anything at all. So yeah. he. He immediately is just not even liking uh, the name of Wild's business, his occupation, before he even meets him. Right. So, yeah, it does start out a little rough, but Wild is very charismatic. He's very, you know, nothing can really get him riled up. So all that bravado that Jacob comes at him with, it kind of, he brushes it off his shoulder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and. Jacob can't help but like this guy is so different than any man I could possibly probably meet and ends up, you know, hearing him out, I guess you could 
say. Okay. I always have to ask um, when I'm talking about romances, Mm -hmm. what is the heat level Mm -hmm. on a scale of one to 10? Like one being, I don't know, um, Christian fiction maybe, (laughs) and 10 being like full blown (laughs) erotica. (laughs) Where does this fall on that scale? (laughs) Um, Okay. I not definitely not erotica, but my scenes uh, are descriptive. Um, not, you know, where you're flipping page after page after page is sex, but they are descriptive. And I want the reader to feel that, that passion in the bedroom. I want them wherever they're, they're making love at. I want the reader to feel it. Um, so they are descriptive. So I'm going to put it at seven. Okay. It might be a good place to put put my books at. Okay, definitely awesome. far from from the one though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you, people want to know. They want to know before they pick it up if they're going to be reading about hand holding or something else. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, you, you're going to get all of it. You're going to okay. get it all. <laughs> Duly noted. (laughs) So how did you come up with the plot for this title? You mentioned that, you know, you really wanted polar opposite characters and that you hadn't written something like this in a while. So how did this plot evolve for you? Um, Like I said, Jacob was just in my mind. um, You know, just this, I kept seeing this scowly, frowning, you know, pissed off character and couldn't really figure out why I had to give him a why. Um, so I, I know that what you're reading that you see, I gave a lot of background as to why he's like that. I felt like that would be needed. You can't just put a, a ticked off character out there, uh, without getting a really in-depth reason why he's like that. Um, and then like I said, I just wanted, I wanted him to, like I said, to have an opposite, um, it took me a while to to come up with with Wild. Even the name I, I got from an episode of Judge Judy. I didn't even know his name was gonna was gonna be Wild. Um, but I don't know. I just kept. See, I, I needed him to in order to to pull through. It just had to be a character that was so different, someone he he wouldn't usually in, encounter. Yeah. Because it was just a typical guy. It would be kind of far fetched that oh, you know, why would this guy make it work with him when nobody else has? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think were a few of the challenges that you came across while writing this story? Um, whether it was research or, you know, psychological or literary or, you know, whatever that, you know, might have given you a, some pause while writing. Yeah, the the psychological of Jacob's character was a little difficult. I did uh, do a couple interviews um with some people who I just feel like are always mad at the world type people. I hope they don't listen to this. <laughs> the reason why I was interviewing them, but just you know, what makes you like that? Because I'm, I'm not like that. I like to see, you know, I can usually see good in, in just about anything. So it was a little bit difficult as far as writing Jacob's role to really get the character to feel why he was, you know, the way he was. And then even after some time, after he got his, his, uh, his law degree, which he wanted so bad and things, you know, working out, he has his office and everything. You should be, you know, feeling a little better about yourself or feeling happy, but he wasn't. Yeah. Uh, so that part was a little difficult because I, I really just kept wanting to jump into make him happy, make him happy. He you know what? Happy. And I understand that because just from reading the bit that I read, I'm like, man, this guy is hard to, I mean, crack, like you could tell he's a hard, you know, he has a hard shell. And I'm like, man, nothing. He is like, really? (laughs) Something else. A lot of people can't tolerate that. Yeah, exactly. And I actually know a couple people like that who just can never see the never see the good in in anything. They've been, you know, you have a a rough road to hoe and and everything. But, uh, you know, is there anything good? Can you laugh about anything? Right. And I actually talked to them, you know, a little while. And it was an interesting couple of interviews, believe me. I don't even think they wanted to talk for very long. <laughs> like pulling teeth, huh? 
Y- yeah, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we know that uh, this is a standalone, and we know that your second mm-hmm. book in your series, that's a second book, right? That's coming out Christmas Eve, or was that another installment? This is book five. This five. is book five in another special series. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's that title again? So I can uh, make sure everyone knows what that is. This is simply called Nothing Special Five. Okay. Because there's nothing special. It starts off the series, which is free right now, by the way, just in case you're considering um, wanting to pick it up. Nothing special. The first one that kicks it off is a free book right now on instafreebie.com. Okay. And uh, books two, um, two, three, and four all have subtitles. Um, But five is a, uh, all of them are in there. So I didn't want to give it just a specific. There are two new MCs um, that are uh, the love interest as well. But this uh, is, again, all of them together being that task force that everyone has fallen in love with. Um, so all of them are are, um, are in this one. So I didn't want to give it a subtitle. So this one is just nothing special five. OK, so. Let's talk a little bit about Coastal Magic, since that is what brought us together here today. That is a book con that is coming this upcoming February in Daytona Beach, Florida. I'm very much looking forward to it. This is my first time attending. Um, Adrian, have you been to Coastal Magic in the past? I went last year. That was my first time there. I went as a reader. Mm -hmm. Uh, So any conference that I want to check out or go to, I will go as a reader first before I will um, ask to go as an author. And obviously one time fell in love with it. It is an amazing conference. The the organizers just do a fabulous job. Everything flows smoothly. Um, My number two, there's no drama. There wasn't a whole lot. (laughs) Yes, that that's my number two that I look for is one, is it organized? Two, is it drama free? Is everybody just happy to be there? Is everybody just happy to see each other, you know, connect again, talk about romance, talk about literature. Uh, there's no, you know, neck bite in and, and all this type. Of, I, I can't deal with that. And I've been to some conferences that I won't go back to because of that. So mm. that's my number two. Yeah. So everybody's just happy to be there. Everybody's just happy to be talking about books. And it's it's so much fun. Oh, that's awesome. No, I'm looking no. forward to it. This is actually mm-hmm. the perfect time for me to get away from Michigan because it's probably going to be 10 degrees below oh. zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I can yeah. imagine. Oh, yeah. So I know they always have panel um, discussion panels. Um, did you sign up for any mm-hmm. yet? Um, <laughs> I'm I'm not big with talking, um, you know, like that. I'm more put my words on paper type person. Mm -hmm. I don't really like to be, you know, in detention like that, but I didn't want to, um, you know, just not sign up for anything. So I did sign up for one that I think would be, you know, okay for me, uh, which is uh, something like, like, what did you do before you started writing and how, if that, or how, or if that has influenced uh, your writing. Mm -hmm. And so I signed up for that one. (laughs) <laughs> Very cool. Well, I don't know I, what I, I I'll be signed before. up for as a moderator yet. I guess we would get told what our jobs are as we get closer. So, <laughs> Oh, OK. So you're going to be moderate one of the panels. Oh, more than one. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. All the featured bloggers have to moderate panels. So um, I don't know if I'll end up with two or three or I I don't know how that's going to go, but I think I have a panel every day at least. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Are you nervous about it? Have you moderated? You You know what? I I did Rust City Book Con in August and that really helped me to, I guess, get my feet wet Uh. because I moderated something like six panels in three days. Um, yeah. Okay. (laughs) Right in there, in the deep end. (laughs) Yeah, I was really over prepared. You know, I'm like a, I like to be really prepared. (laughs) And of course, you know, the authors came through like the professionals that they were, and they carried the conversation. So there wasn't really any, you know, silent, awkward 
looks where I had to like fill some space, but you know, my questions fit in smoothly and it was great. So I'm hoping for the same thing at Coastal Magic. Awesome. Okay. I, I went to quite a few panels um, last year and, and they were, they were all fun. They're all really fun. And, and if, if more of the, the same authors are coming back again, we're going to have a blast. They are characters, all of them. So uh, I hope you end up on my panel. Oh, yes, I hope so. I love doing it. I really look forward to meeting you. And like I said, I only signed up for one panel. We'll see. (laughs) Yes, I look forward to meeting you there as well. Well, thank you for joining me today. It's been a blast and I learned a lot and I have added to my TBR list. So I really appreciate that. You're welcome. And everyone, all of Adrienne's links are below and you will find links to her, um, a few of her books, including uh, her most recent release and the, you can pre-order the one that's coming out december 24th so that is it thank you so much again for joining me adrian i really appreciate that thank you and thank you everyone if you enjoyed today's interview and would like to show your support there are a few things you can do first you can head on over to itunes and give a positive five-star review you can follow me on twitter you can follow the shelf addiction podcast on spreaker the only place where you can listen live and get broadcast notifications so that you never miss an episode most importantly you can share this podcast with friends and family that enjoy bookish topics thank you for listening and i will see you soon with another author interview until next time happy reading Thank you.